In 1880, four years after Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, John O'Neill founded the town that bears his name today. One year later, because of the railroad, the community had grown from 54 to a little over 1,200 souls. In December of 1882, two short years since the town was founded, a dedicated group of citizens received the call to form a church, our church. This church, this congregation, this family, began like most, from humble beginnings when 13 people signed a petition requesting that a church be organized to serve the spiritual needs of the community. At that meeting, our founders set down the Articles of Faith and made a covenant that became the foundation of our church. They said, We, the members of the First Presbyterian Church O'Neill, do voluntarily associate ourselves together for the maintenance of the public worship and the administration of the ordinances of the House of God, and to that end, that there may be good understanding, harmony, and growth among us, we adopt for mutual guidance and protection the following as our basis of Christian fellowship. First, we believe there is only one living and true God, existing in three persons, equal in every divine attribute, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Second, we believe that the scriptures of the Old and New Testament are inspired word of God, the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Third, we believe that mankind was created upright and holy, but through temptation fell from the state of purity to one of sin and guilt, and thereby incurred the righteous displeasure of God. Fourth, we believe that God, through His infinite mercy, through His Son Jesus Christ, has prepared a way of escape from the state of sin and guilt. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever so believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He is able and willing, therefore, to save all who repent and believe in his Son. We believe in making effectual this work of Christ. The Holy Spirit was promised and given to convince men of truth to inspire new life, to sanctify and preserve the people of God unto the glorious day of his coming. We believe that all those who avail themselves of the merciful provisions of God in the gift of His Son and His Holy Spirit will live godly lives, be active in works of benevolence and mercy, continue in prayer, persevere faith, and give all diligence to make their peace, calling, and election sure. We believe that in the end of the world there would be a general resurrection from the dead, both of the righteous and the wicked, and a day of solemn judgment that those who are in Christ will be received into everlasting habitation, while those who on earth have neglected him will depart from his presence forever in confusion and shame. We believe that the word of God, as a law of Christian life, is also a law of Christian liberty, and not only gives, but guarantees to all freedom of conscience and Christian worship, while at the same time it requires observance of the Sabbath, the consecration of the household to Christ, the community and fellowship of all God's people with one another, and an abiding love for the souls of mankind. On January 14, 1883, at a meeting moderated by the Rev. John Salanus, with ten people in attendance, our church was born, and John Riggs was elected to the position of the stated clerk of session. Once formed, the congregation didn't waste any time, and in short order a church building was raised. Lacking the money for stained glass windows, but with a congregation not lacking in innovation, the plain glass windows were covered with colored paper to simulate stained glass. In 1907, four years after the Wright brothers' first successful flight, and one year before the 25th anniversary of the church, Neil Brennan, owner of a local hardware store, presented a thousand-pound bell to the congregation requesting that it be rung every twelfth day of May at ten in the morning to commemorate the day he landed on his homestead in O'Neill, an obligation that was honored for many years. In 1974, upon the occasion of the city's 100th birthday, the bell was moved to its new home, where it can be found today on the grounds of the Holt County Courthouse. In 1913, the church was remodeled to provide for the addition of a choir loft, pulpit, minister's study, and other improvements. But the congregation was growing, 
and not too many more years the church family began to outgrow their home. In November 1954, the members of the congregation determined they needed a bigger home and a building committee was selected. The committee wasted no time, and in 1955 the architectural firm of Howard Strong Associates was hired to design the new sanctuary. Their design was accepted, and a debt of $75,000 taken on to build the new church. On March 25, 1956, the groundbreaking ceremony for the new educational unit was held. On April 7, the first Sunday school Thanksgiving service was held in the Fellowship Hall, and on September 13, 1959, the service of dedication was held for the educational unit. In the fall of 1961, construction began on the new sanctuary, beginning with the demolition of the old. On June 17, 1962, the new sanctuary was dedicated, and we see it as it stands today. The congregation continued to work hard, and on March 27, 1966, ten years after breaking ground to begin construction, a mortgage-burning ceremony was held to celebrate the congregation being free of its debts on the manse and the church properties. That's the story of the building, but the real story is the living church, the people the building contains. Since that day in January 1883, the congregation has been served by 30 pastors, most of them men, but two of them women. First O'Neill continues to work hand-in-hand -hand with our sister church, Bethany, and after many years of informal partnership, the two churches signed a formal yoke agreement. The church continues to grow, with a membership today of 834 members, compared to the average congregation in the presbytery of 205. The involvement of our youth in the community ensures this church, our church, our family, will continue to thrive well into the next century. This is only part one. Come back in 75 years and we'll show you part two of our family album. Thanks and God bless.